there's a sister asking, saying that she really has a heart to do evangelism, but sometimes it is, might not be the right time or whatever reason. And I want to say this, when you have the heart that is most important, and evangelism we can practice a lot. First practice, strengthening the members. See, like you catch fish, but the fish already come into the church. They're already here. So these are your first fish. Even though they come to the church, are they necessarily saved? Some of them are not. Are they necessarily strong? Some of them are not. So your first task is to care about them. But don't make them feel that every time they come in, then you will present the gospel to them. But then you really like to see them and happy to see them. How are you? And remember how they are. And then care about the situation, care about the children and everything. And then at one point, you can ask them, uh, do you find Jesus helpful? As these are ways to talk to people instead of saying, are you saved? Because when you ask people, are you saved? Some people might feel you're, check, you're checking each one of our each one of us and checking if we're safe or not, then there's pressure. But you say, do you find Jesus helpful? Does, has He helped you in any ways? And then uh, they will respond to you, oh yes, I have found Jesus helpful. Tell me how. Tell me how. Let them talk. And then find out, like today when he said that, uh, you know, in the, I asked him because in the pain, suffering he had, how have you experienced God? And then when I talked with him, another brother, and then he said, you know, he, he has a motivation. I noticed that he is a, he's very expressive. So I asked him, were you like that before you were saved? He said, he's not. So how did the change come from? And then, then I explore and find out about him. So for each person, they say, yes, I like the Lord. Tell me about it. What, what makes you like the Lord? And how do you like the Lord? And how has it helped you? And then he says, yes, this is how the Lord has helped me. And then you say, wow, that's wonderful. And then, uh, but do you find the strength all the time? And then they say, well, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. And then tell me about it. When do you f don't, uh, don't find the strength? And then, and then uh, respond to them and how we can find more strength. So that way, you build up the friendship first. And then you understand how they grow in the Lord. And then appreciate God's work. God is wonderful. He's working in your life. He's working in your life, working in your life, working in your life, speaking to you. So God is wonderful. And then you want God to work more and then bless you more. So that way you strengthen the fish here who are already here. <laughs> and then you find ways. Now there are different ways to have more evangelism. Like use the home. Have some refreshment. Invite your friends, like it's some festivals or some occasion, just invite your friends to come over some, for some activity, some celebration, and then, and then uh, share with them, and then uh, pray with them. You know, today we train the, the, uh, the, how to pray for people with anointing. And you notice that when uh, you, the more you pray and you practice, then you notice that when you pray, you can sense the anointing. And, now, some of you experience the Holy Spirit so easily. Actually, you have the anointing already. Amen. But the main thing is also take care of problems in life. Because if you have problems, you have hurt feelings or evil spirit, it has to be taken care of before you lay hands on people. If not, you pass those yes. sadness to people. Yes. So you want to take care of those. But you don't wait until 10 years later you take care of the problems. Amen. Basically, you're working on it and you yes. repent yes. of any failure, any yes. sin, and you really want to work on it, it's okay. Already okay. It's okay for you to pray for people. You don't have to wait until you're perfectly perfect. No more, totally no anger. You know, you might have to wait for a long time. But basically, whenever you're angry, you'll repent and ask God to forgive you. You're already okay, and then you can pray for people. And first practice with the brother and sister. And I encourage uh, the pastor, you can gather them together, to those who are devoted, to practice praying for each other, practice presentation of gospel, and then send them out and then report. Tell what happens. And then encourage them. And ask them to share. And then share what they did. And then and, and if they pray for someone and someone experienced the Holy Spirit, ask them to share. And then say, God is working here so we can bring these people to Christ. So build an atmosphere of 
of a sharing of a group you know a group that right here this group can be the core group in a church they don't have to have a title first they just are gathered for training and then praying for each other and then going out and then be, be aware of any kind of sin or hindrances because in the middle sometimes people want to push people when they pray for people don't do that that's a hindrance you notice that it's not just falling down some people just say do the people fall down it's not the most important thing it's what the people experience yes. it's most important when they experience the love of God the peace of God then they have the motivation yeah. that way you build up people and then take care of the negative uh, feelings or, or sins mm -hmm.